The October What's Neat starts right now! The What's Neat Show is sponsored by Lombard Hobbies, your value hobby shop for over 40 years of modelers helping modelers. Big inventory, value pricing, fast shipping, and great service. And by Bachman Trains. Now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at bachmantrains.com. And thank you for helping us support the best hobby in the world. This is What's Neat for October 2022. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, and this month we've got a great show in that we go to the NMRA National here in St. Louis with seven great interviews, including five manufacturers and two layouts. And so this is going to be a pretty good show. That Lego layout is absolutely amazing. Also, be sure to check out the What's Neat This Week podcast that we shoot down here every Saturday night keeping you updated weekly on what's new in our hobby, including new products, special guests, and a lot of other great information that is this, the best hobby in the world. You can look up the What's Neat show at WNIndex.com, or you can Google WNIndex, and there you will find an index for all of the What's Neat shows that we've done, including the how-to, subject matter, and everything else. But before we start this show, I'd like to introduce you to Larry Harrington out in beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, that's going to update us on a lot of the new products that Bachman Industries now has. Larry, how are you today? It's great to have you on the show. Great to be with you today, too. Uh, it was nice stopping by your actual studio the other day and uh, getting to see how everything really works out there. It was really nice. So, so um, yeah, today we, we have a, a tremendous amount of items to go over. We, get, we launched our annual uh, NMRA announcements, which is usually tooling and, um, or improvements to tooling or improvements to products. So we have a, a tremendous amount of products to share with you today. That's awesome. Uh, so... I can start right off, or if there's anything else you want to discuss before we go, we'll, we'll just go into it. No, I'm very impressed with the new Acela. I was impressed with the new transfer caboose from Missouri Pacific in the paint scheme. It's totally killer. And that N-scale narrow gauge locomotive that doesn't have a face on it, now it's got a prototype front on it, which lends itself well to people that want to model narrow gauge on their HO scale layouts. So pardon me if I look away, but I'm going to use my... Uh a second monitor here is a cheat sheet to see what I'm going through. But the <laughs> first, first announcement we have is, the, and you can actually tell you, um, for all the uh, watchers out there and listeners, go to our website, www.bachmantrains.com, and in the upper right-hand corner, there's a, a icon that says catalogs and brochures. You click on that, that'll take you to a digital version of all the products that I'm going to talk about today. So you can see the actual illustrations, you can zoom in, you can get all the information. Um, so, uh, being new announcements, we don't have a lot to share with you as far as the actual physical product at this point, but we're working on them actively. I did share a few with you when we were last month, um, actual, the girder bridge for men's scale, um, and the large scale announcements that are in the brochure. So, yes. I'm not going to, I'm not going to repeat those again today it's for time's purposes, but again, go to the brochure, check it out. Uh, the first thing you were talking about was the Arcella 2. Yes. The newer version of the Acela that you're going to see in service um, soon. They're doing some testing on it right now. And we're going to sell that as we have in the past with a, um, a set. It's going to have several cars and two um, powered locomotive and a dummy locomotive. And that'll be the starter set for you. That'll, the basic, you can run that. Everything will work together fine. Nice. It'll, gonna, it'll come with the uh, power pack and controller and also the, um, the loop of... 22 inch radius concrete tie track. So that's one thing we just introduced last year was the concrete tie track. And it makes sense to have them with all the passenger uh, service on the Northeast Carter because that's what the track is. Right. So um, then also along with that, we have the additional cars that you can purchase to actually make the entire nine unit train if you wish. So um, 
those will be separate sale items, but those will be more for the modeler that wants to get the actual complete um, set. So we figured the um, it be, might be a little large for a starter set for the beginner, okay. even if they like it. But now they have the five piece, um, and then you have the add-ons to make a total nine piece. So going to the next item we have, um, we have an HO. We have two more paint schemes in the ACS 64. Um, the one people were screaming about was the Phase 3 um, Train Sim World 2 um, wrap that, that Amtrak has put on their locomotive. And as soon as that hit the rails, when are you going to do it? When are you going to do it? So we had, we had to work through some, some licensing with Train Sim and Dovetail, and we did that, and we were able to introduce that for this um, brochure. So we have that, and along with that, we're also going to do the tribute to the, um, the gun unit, the for the David L. Gunn number 600. So we'll have that. A lot of people have asked for that one as well. So um, that will come as, as the previous one with full sound uh, from Wow Sound. It's got the um, their, it's got the Keep Alive and all that good stuff and nice. lots of sounds. So very good quality. Um, the next item we have is uh, you either love it or you hate it. This is the HO BL2. Um, it's always been kind of a model that I thought was a pivotal model and in, in a pivotal prototype in the industry. It got us the, all the Jeeps. If we didn't have the BL2, we wouldn't have the Jeeps these days. So uh, BL2 was not the most successful locomotive, but it was on a good number of railroads. I, th I think there's a, there at least nine different, including the demonstrator, plus there's multiple paint schemes. So the, the model has some life. Um, you can't, it's one thing when we pick a locomotive, or a piece of rolling stock, we have to be able to have multiple paint schemes in order to pay for the tooling expense um, down the road. Very um, cool. Very cool. Next item, and we're, we're chock full of uh, passenger equipment. So the uh, Amtrak modelers and passenger models will be real happy. You know, we, we're, we've announced it previously, but not officially. Well, we're doing the venture cars for both the VIA rail so that you can make your complete set because we did announce the VIA Charger locomotive previously, but not the cars. But now this will have all the cars in the consist, including the cab car. Um, that'll have uh, you know, prototypical details. And then we're also doing, at this time, the coach for the um, Amtrak Midwest or the IDOT coach. That's the only one that's currently on the rails. We probably will do additional models as they are delivered, but right now that's the only one that's out there. Um, also an HO. Next is a a chemical tank car with platform and, with, and we're doing this model. We did show this at the show, so I'm going to go over quickly, but it does have two, two different domes um, for the pr different prototypes. So that's it for that. And let's see what else we got here. Uh, we got, um, as you said before, with the transfer caboose and I got numerous emails from Missouri Pacific modelers saying, this is not a, a transfer caboose. <laughs> this is a short, a bay caboose, and I am aware of that. But we have to kind of have one name for a product when we introduce it in the catalog. So we're doing it as a transfer caboose. You can call it when you put it on your layout. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, so, but we we do know that that was a, a mainline caboose. So, um, for, as you mentioned in the in the uh, Tom uh, the narrow gauge line. Now we're taking the narrow gauge uh, Fletcher and Jennings. Um, 042T locomotive. Yeah, you got got one in front of you there. I oh. love this locomotive. Yeah, it's a cute little locomotive. It but runs they, really good. Now, are these gonna? Are you anticipating putting DCC in this, or will that be DC? Um, right now, just DC. Okay, it's awfully small. It is small. Uh, I'm sure that it's possible to get DCC in there. We've done it with small models before. We've done it with an N scale 44 tonner. So I think it's possible, but I can't get, I can't promise that until I actually look at it. Okay. So, so um, also in HO and Thomas and Friends, we have um, Bo, which is a 440 American character that was in one episode. And we have Rebecca. Um, and then we will be introducing some, excuse me, I can't read the screen here. Some narrow gauge um, box vans. Uh, no, not narrow, narrow gauge, regular um no, it is narrow gauge. I'm sorry. We have these these box vans in every uh, gauge and scale. So um, this Thomas's uh, Doug Blaine's uh, realm of uh, expertise. I 
I'm not always as up on the products as I should be, but uh, but I should be able to read. So that's not. We love Doug me. Blaine. He is yeah. the king of Sodor. Oh yeah, king of Sodor. <laughs> um, so um, and you can, we have uh, we're doing this is uh, by the way our first introduction into the train business was Plasticville. Okay. I don't know if you know the history behind Plasticville. We made, I believe, the first thing we made was a. A, um, a lot of th um, people used to make Christmas gardens, especially people from Germany and Poland, and and they used to make um, they call them putzes, I think, um, where they used to make a little uh, diorama under their tree. Yes. So um, we used to the first thing we did, I believe, was a, like a garden fence, and then we expanded the line to include houses and and numbers of other things um, as well, telephone poles, light posts. Things of that nature. Well, that happened 75 years ago. Yes. So that, that's when we really started getting involved in trains was 75 years ago. So we're in tribute, we're making a special edition in both HO and N scale, four models in each of the, um, the HO. Using uh, the box, we'll have the original artwork that we used when we promoted the item. So it'll never be out of date. When I was never eight, out of date. When I was nope. in fourth grade for Christmas, I got my first Plasticville buildings. They came in a set of six, and that absolutely made my four by eight Tyco layout for me. And you know, to this day, I mean, I personally have a model train collection, and I know lots of other people do. If you acquire on a collection or of any kind, of any size, you're going to find Plasticville of some sort in that box. So it's uh, it's been around for a long time, and it is the standard. Of, a lot of there. modelers have made serious models out of the gas station because that that is the one kit that, as I recall, it's based on a prototype. Well, actually, if you've uh, seen our Thomas layout at um, at some of the shows that we take it to travel it around, then uh, usually World's Greatest Hobby. Our, my colleague Ray Buteau built a really neat um, mining thing out of the uh, coal coal tower. So yes. is it's 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 pretty neat. So I'll, I'm sure you can look on uh, online to find it somewhere. So to continue on here, we have an end scale. We have uh, we have a, we had a, we kind of had a soft announce earlier of the ALC 42 um, because. There was speculation since we did the SC44 that we would be also doing the ALC42. So we'll be doing the ALC42 um, and four different items. Um, one would be the day one um, paint scheme, as we did in HO. Um, nice. Then we'll do the phase six, and then we'll do two of the phase sevens that just hit the rails. So you don't you have the, the um, in front of you the SC44, the Phase six, and then the day one in front of you. But yes, have it, we'll do the day um, phase seven soon to follow in HO as well. That wasn't officially announced, but you know it's coming. So, so yes, some of my favorite uh, Amtrak locomotives. They're they're, they're killer. Uh, it's, I've, I'm so proud of that project. We worked very closely with Siemens. We worked with TCS, and between all all the companies, we got probably one of the best diesel models we've ever built. Yes. Um, with the sound and light functions, it's incredible. Um, next, next end scale item is uh, SD forty two. We'll have that available in four road names: the Santa Fe, CSX, Norfolk Southern, and Union Pacific. Um, now we've done something, and I, we get criticized for this sometimes, but darn it, it's fun. <laughs> and and you know what? Fun should be part of the hobby, and we've done it in HO, we've done it in large scale, and now we're doing it in end scale. It's the animated stock car. Uh, yeah, has the, it has the two animals that bob in and out, um, and you know what? They sell very well. So you know the critics out there, they're the purists, that say, "Oh, it's a bobblehead <laughs> car." It's like, it's fun, guys. Come on, let's have some fun. I agree. You know, bring the bring the kids over. The you know, and, and they'll see. Oh, that'll bring excitement to your layout. They they're not going to care what a prototypical locomotive is, but if they see that horse bobbing in and out, you may have a new hobbyist there. So. So we're going to induce those in four paint schemes, um, uh, CB&Q, Union Pacific, Baltimore, Ohio, and our, our famous Christmas uh, reindeer car. So um, and while we're at it, we're um, also going to do the stock car, which hasn't been in our line for a while, in B&O. Um, actually, I made a mistake. I'm sorry. The, the animated car will be Rio Grande, not B&O. The B&O will be in the standard stock car. Okay. Uh, we'll have a CN, uh, Chicago, uh, excuse me, Canadian National 
Uh, New York Central and Pennsylvania will be the other three road names in that that uh, gathering there. Um, and scale continues. We'll have the drop end gondola, 52 foot, six inch gondola. So we'll do that in Frisco, Great Northern, New York Central, and Union Pacific. Nice. Um, and we'll share some of these images with you so you can put them up on your screen when you uh, are doing the actual final cut here. Uh, the, and the bridge I talked about, I'll we'll skip over that. We've uh, we got the uh, um, Gordon and N scale and Toad and N scale for the Thomas N scale fans there. Um, now on to our ON30 line. Yes. We're bringing back with some improvements um, the ON30 280. Consolidation. Um, consolidation. And so we're doing um, a painted unlettered version. We're doing a, a United States Potash version and a White Pass and Yukon version. Nice. All, all will feature details to the prototype. And this, this model will feature our first Tsunami 2 decoder So from Soundtrack. So it's going to be a very nice sound package. And uh, this will also be um, have some upgrades to the drivetrain as well. And then, as I mentioned, with um, Plasticville, we'll have four items in O scale as well as HO. And then on to large scale, we made the announcements at the show of the GP40. Yes. And uh, that's it. that'll be in CSX, Norfolk Southern, Santa Fe, and Union Pacific. Um, we also, people, we did the uh, end of train device with the, the large box car, the 53-foot Evans car. And people said, well, I don't, I want the car too, so... We decided to introduce a, another number um, without the end of train device for the ones that we had the end of train device for. And then we also added two numbers of the Tropicana orange um, juice box car. So nice. that's um, – and then also pairing up with the 129th scale um, large scale items will be the um, 100 ton Bethlehem steel hopper which will have the Pennsylvania um, Power and Light, CSX, Norfolk Southern, Union Pacific, and each one of those will come in two road numbers. Nice. So, and then we'll have the, in, in Thomas large scale, we'll have the museum coaches and the museum brake coach. So, and then winding it, winding it all up here, we have um, some items in our O-Gage line, the Williams line, where we continue to add on to the Easy Street, um, Easy Street uh, line, which is uh, we'll have a, a vehicle, a, a kind of a morbid thing, but you know, it could be for Halloween too. Hearse, a hearse, an ambulance, and a station wagon. So um, we will, you know, introduce those sometime next year, and also we'll have a track pack for Easy Street to, um, so you have you know, everything you need right out of a box to make an oval of track. That's cool. And finally. Not least, last but not least, we have the much anticipated upgrade to Easy Command. It's the Easy Command Plus model. Okay. Uh, this will allow you to do more things than you. Than everybody, a lot of people grew up with Easy Command. We've probably made tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of units of the Easy Command, and it's got a lot of people into DCC. Um, but there was always some limitations, um, and now we have less limitations. So. This model will have um, feature the ability to address all 28 function buttons. It will have 128 speed steps. It will have um, an emergency brake option, which just will address the current locomotive that is being operated. And it still have the emergency stop for the entire layout, which kills power to everything. But the emergency, the e-brake, as it's referred to, will yes. just just stop the one locomotive you're currently controlling and it has a speed speed indicator as well so when you switch between locomotives you can see approximately how fast you're going um when you go between different locomotives it'll still it still supports the one analog um operation of the, so those people who are transitioning from analog to dcc can still take advantage of having it on their layout and then it also has the ability to control um our turnouts with the uh, uh you can turn eight different turnouts with the easy command um unit so that's very cool that's a lot of new products and that's it's a lot I've of new seen. products one of the most i think we've ever introduced at nmra so uh <laughs> it's gonna be a busy year for me <laughs> it is it's going to be 
I look forward to that Acela. I can't wait to see that running down here. That's exciting because on the last podcast, 207, we in fact talked about the narrow gauge ON30 consolidation that's coming out with sound. That's exciting. I want to start a new project layout for that, which I think will be very entertaining all through 2023 as we build that. But this Acela, again, is very exciting. It's a beautiful model, and I can't wait to see it. We can't wait either. It's going to take some time for development because it's a complex model, but we're going to make sure it's right when we deliver it. So, um, oh, by the way, that is sound ready. That'll be DCC sound ready. So we'll have a, a speaker installed and a 21 pin to, um, plug so you can plug your favorite decoder in there. That's very cool, Larry. So that rounds it out for the Bachman new products for this month of October. Is that right? That's that's right. Uh, hopefully we'll have some uh, samples from new stuff the next time we talk. We love it when you introduce our viewers to all the new products like you've had. And so with that, now let's continue on with the NMRA show 2022 here in St. Louis for the October What's Neat. Hello, this is Michael Gross and you're watching What's Neat with Ken Patterson. Today we're at the NMRA National 2022 convention in St. Louis, Missouri. Right now we're in Collinsville, Illinois at the uh, Gateway Center. And I've got Joshua and Daniel from the podcast with us today. Guys, tell me you've been here for one day so far. This is our second day at the show. What do you think, starting with you, Josh? Just amazing. All these layouts, so you can see all the functionality of all the trains, all of the vendors that are here. It, it's just amazing, all the things to see here. You need more than one day. You need all three days. Right, I agree. Daniel, have you spent any money yet? Not yet, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> what are you gonna what do you got in mind? <laughs> a lot of things in mind. I might hit up that new uh, Blue Nami Decoder soundtracks came out with, which I think they'll have an interview here with George pretty quick. Yeah, that's some pretty exciting news. It is. A decoder that works on Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth. with your phone. You can optimize all the settings, no more CD programming, but uh, just stay tuned for that. Right. So with that, we're going to do some interviews, look at some layouts, a few manufacturers, and just see what's all exciting here in this show. <laughs> I'm standing here with Samantha Pogue from Woodland Scenics in Lynn Creek, Missouri. And you are the director of marketing yes, of am. this company that has made our layouts beautiful for years and years. Because with your products, I can do that too, yeah. is the way it really is. That's exactly Tell right. me about your passion for the hobby. I've been watching you do these clinics, <laughs> mm -hmm. and you've just got this personality that radiates when you're doing your presentations. Aww, well, thank you so much. Well, I really do love these products. What I love about them most is that they're so easy to use. We have little kids, six, seven years old, all the way up to older modelers that have been experienced models that maybe never even tried their hand at scenery before. Right. And they are doing it for the first time and they're all doing it so easily. That's what is so great about our landscape products. Anyone can do it, you can't mess up, and it all looks so realistic for your model train layouts. That's absolutely yeah. awesome. Now you've got a couple of new products that you're announcing here at the NMRA show. Yes. Tell us about Tell us about those. Okay, yeah, our first one, which is gonna come out early this fall. It's one of our newest built and ready buildings. Okay. It is our toy and hobby junction. Okay. And it comes in N, H, O, and O scales. Mm. And the nice thing about the toy and hobby junction is that you can actually see the interior it has a very highly detailed interior with little uh, airplanes on a couple of the scales that hang from the ceiling, oh, nice. which is so cool. And all kinds of little fun things that you would see in a toy and hobby store. And you can see them from each side of the building, which is so cool from the windows because it's a two-story, okay. two-story building, which is brand new for us. We've never done that before. That actually can see both levels. Nice. Now, we, that kind of joins some of our other recent um, buildings that came out earlier this year, like the Smith Brothers TV and Appliance that okay. has little TVs that flash, and also our Miss Molly's Diner and our Carver's Butcher Shop. So. Both of those, it's really exciting to have this new addition. We've had a lot of interest about it so That far. is really cool. Yeah. And I love those flashing TV screens in I that know. building. I know, aren't they so neat? Yes. yes. What yeah. a neat concept. The design yeah. guys, hats off oh to them. Gosh. They Amazing. help design your products. Now yes. you've also added to the Just Plug lighting system. Yes. Tell us about the exciting new signals. Oh, we're so excited to announce this. So we have our brand new traffic lights. Okay. okay? It's a great accessory for any model layout that you have. And what is, what's so nice about it is they're kind of modeled after the 40s and the 50s, but there's still traffic lights that you're going to see 
on roads and at intersections, busy intersections today. We have three different kinds. We have the pedestal, which is one that you see kind of in busy historic downtown areas. Then we have a mast arm, the kind that kind of hang over the intersection. Nice. And then we also have a suspended flashing. So this one actually has a yellow flashing signal, like you would see at a rural intersection, to kind of caution you to, hey, slow down before you move through the intersection. And they're all come in N, H, O, and O scales. They're all very highly detailed, weathered, um, authentically weathered. So they're a great addition. And they plug simply plug right into your light hub with the just plug lighting system. It's that easy. And it's amazing. The LEDs mm -hmm. seem to last forever. The yes. concept of it is so easy and that you can hook it up. Mm -hmm. We actually made a What's Neat video on the entire product line about 2017 and it came out really good. Yeah. God, thank you so much for that. I know, right? So, Samantha, yeah. thank you so much for sharing all the yeah, new products with our viewers on okay. What's Neat. Great. Thank you so much, Ken. I appreciate it. I'm standing here with the amazing Stephen Priest. And Steve... You've made some major announcements at this show, including a new, wonderful company in our industry. Thank you. Tell us about that. Well, we're actually going into the model rarity production uh, aspect of the uh, the great hobby of model rarity. Yes. Um, oddly enough, I've been producing models for other manufacturers for years and years and years. We produced hundreds of models for other companies as a contract company for them. So, uh, at this point, we decided, hey, you know, we're kind of foolish if we don't just go ahead and go the extra nine yards and uh, kick her on off and start our own company. So we decided to do that. And uh, so we've uh, started class1modelworks.com. Uh, primarily we're gonna be selling direct, but we will work with a certain group of select hobby shops uh, that we have been vetting over the last eh, probably six months or so. Nice. And we have our first uh, products in China being produced. And uh, we'll talk about those a little bit today. Okay. Okay. I'm excited because I've seen them. Tell us what they are. Okay, so we've got currently, we've got uh, some interesting intermodal cars. We've got a TWF-10, which is a fantastic, unique intermodal car, but was had a very special place in the intermodal world. And if you're an intermodal fan, you'll re real quickly recognize that these cars look like nothing else. They have a, a special or unique truck underneath them, and they were designed uh, to carry very heavy container cars uh, uh, in service because instead of carrying the weight of the car in the bolster, which is the center pin, they actually carry the cars on the outer edges of the car, which is why they have this large structural area around the car, around the ends of the car. And the point of that is, is basically uh, to just distribute the load of the car differently. So uh, extremely unique cars. And uh, they actually have the names or the nickname of Dreadnought or Battleship in the railroad world because they kind of look like a battleship sitting low in the water. Right. Uh, cool cars, uh, we designed them. Uh, they're all metal uh, with plastic detail parts and etched, uh, etched parts on them. And uh, they uh, run beautifully, and of course they have a never before produced, produced Wagon Union truck, which is something that's never been produced in the hobby before. And uh, track extremely well, and are uh, uh, really selling quite well. We're actually kind of stunned at how well they're moving right now. So uh, we're enjoying it, and the intermodal guys are enjoying it especially. So we're bringing them out in three versions, as delivered, kind of an intermediate service life, and then a late service life version that uh, has some built-in weathering to it. Uh, and some patching on it, which is, you know, as modelers, that's kind of a neat thing to do that because it kind of gives them a history uh, through time via paint. We also have containers for these. We have two types of containers. We have a Monon and a Hyundai uh, container, and that's what these are here. A couple of varieties each. We're going to be doing a lot of these containers, and they are, they're, uh, have never been done before, especially with the raised uh, outer supports. Uh, and uh, and th this level of detail. So these are selling well as well. So we're uh, extremely happy with that. I'm gonna run B-roll on this next product you're gonna talk about. Tell me about this beautiful center depressed flat car. Okay, so uh, it's interesting. Heavy duty flat cars had two purposes. The first purpose was to obviously carry things that was heavy, but the second thing was is to have a center that was depressed so that you could carry a taller load. Right. And a lot of people don't realize that part of the design of that was the taller load, not necessarily the heavy duty. So what we've done with that car is uh, we've basically produced it. It's gonna have a metal frame as well, uh, outside roller bearings and things like that as well that are functioning as these cars do. They have outside operating roller bearings. Um, the neat thing about the car is, is that every railroad had them. I mean, virtually every railroad had that car. 
Uh, they generally had one or two. Uh, some had as many as 15. Okay. But, and, and they started in 1950 in their production, and they're still out there today. So there's an incredibly long run on them. So you, a lot of roads like Union Pacific, you can put them in three or four different paint schemes because of just the longevity of the life. And you can, that's and, awesome. Uh, so it's awesome. They're awesome. Now you also made a new locomotive uh, announcement that's coming out. Tell us about that. So we're uh, bringing out a GP40, and uh, he's. So anyway, we're bringing out a GP40, and that GP40 is. Uh, um, uh, there have been a couple models out there produced before, but they're getting a little long in the tooth, as you right. may know. And so the GP40s are, are kind of ripe for a locomotive to get in and produce. And I talked with a lot of people in the model railroad world, Brian Banna and a lot of the other guys. And when we were originally doing this, kind of uh, ran kind of a uh, an informal uh, survey. And Brian and some other people said, hey, man, you got to do the Jeep 40 first because right. that's just fresh for picking. And I'm like, okay, here we go. So we uh, grabbed a hold of that, and we're doing a lot of different body styles on it. We're also doing things that have never been done in the model railroad industry before, such as a step wall height. Um, if you look at the uh, the drawings over there, there are two two step wall heights, uh, which is basically the height of the the stairs on the end of the engine and the step wells from the ground. And there's two separate yeah. versions of that we're doing, uh, as well as a variety of jack pads and some other things like that. Complete animation in them, uh, sound obviously, and uh, then some other neat lighting features and things like that. So. As a, as a hardcore, you know, modeler, man, this stuff's right up my field, and I, I love it. I know, it's Stephen. You have a passion like no one else in this hobby. I've watched you for years. I think we met back in the early 90s at a Santa Fe modelers meet out in Kansas City, mm -hmm. and it was a joy to see your first layout that was in the condo, mm -hmm. and you've had so many others since. Six, you are we've definitely, had six, 16 layouts. We built 16 layouts, yeah. You are such a leader in our hobby, and we can't wait to see what you do next, Thank and we you. really appreciate you sharing all your new wares with the viewers of What's Neat. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm standing with Richard Gladder, and this is the Lego layout, otherwise known as? LGMS, the Lego Gauge Modular Standard. So this is actually a standard that we as the Lego community have come up with. We actually came up with it after the Kansas City NMRA show. Right. We got together, you filmed our display there. We yes. Had, we had about six individual layouts there, and we decided, hey, why don't we all get together and come up with a standard so that we can all display together in one big layout. Nice idea. So this is what we came up with. So our standard, just like any other traditional model railroad standard, we define where the track goes, we define track height, all of that. Um, and that's all that we define in our standard. We keep it pretty simple. Um, there are definitely a lot more nuances, just like every other standard, uh, but that's this is our display. So. It's amazing. I do recall from that last interview, y'all don't glue your stuff together. No. You keep it so that you can make modifications along the line. Absolutely. Yeah, we do not glue anything. Um, well, I won't say we don't glue anything. We do glue a couple of things. Like, there are some detail parts that tend to fall off, especially in transportation, that we might glue on um, just so that things don't fall apart. But um, for the most part, no, no glue. Very and cool. All of our models are also scratch built. So the vast majority of our rolling stock and locomotives, we, we design from the original line drawings that we go out and find, just like wow. the scratch builders do. Wow. And they're all designed from there. Um, we, of course, have, we do have some fun things too, some non-prototypical trains around too okay. that the kids love. But it's also fun to have very prototypical, very accurate models. Absolutely. Now, is this battery powered? Yes, everything is battery powered. Um, we use a couple of different control systems. We use Lego's control system, which is power functions and powered up. Okay. Um, the power functions uses infrared control. Powered up uses Bluetooth. Nice. We also, we don't have anyone here this weekend that is using it, but we do have some people that use Airwire. Okay. And now after this weekend, I'm sure that most of the people in the model railroad community are familiar with Blue Rail. Yes. Or Blue Nami. Sorry, it's Sunday afternoon right, right, right. at the end From of the show. Soundtracks, yes. But yes. Um, so we have actually bought those decoders and installed them here at the show. Fantastic. So you know they work. 
absolutely. They work great. That's awesome. Walk us around some of the feature scenes on this layout that you like. Okay, absolutely. Um, so across the front of the layout here, um, this is three modules from three individual builders, but they work together in a confined scene, okay. and it was actually a happy accident that they worked out that way. Right. But this sort of factory scene kind of flows throughout the warehouse and then into kind of a more rural town area. Okay. This was from three different builders. One of the builders is from Indiana. One of the builders is from Pennsylvania, and the other one is from Texas. Very cool. And they all just kind of work together. Um, as we work our way, I mean, as we work our way more around the layout, you can see a cool beach scene. Um, this uh, display has actually been around for a few years, um, and it's been at many of our LGMS displays. We, as an LGMS community, we don't d display just at train shows like this. We also display at Lego hobby shows right, um, and comic conventions and that sort of thing. Um, this display, just to give a little bit more information, is put on by members from all over the country, but we are also members of individual clubs uh, okay. as well um, that we call LUGS, Lego user groups. Right. So we're, we're all various members of our own local LUGS. Um, so as we move on into the huge buildings here. Yes, those cranes. The, the cranes and the skyscrapers that are under construction. Right. So that is built by a member who's in Wisconsin, um, and he's always built very big buildings, um, and they're amazing. Um, on display here, he has actually, they're actually shrunk. They go taller. Okay. We run out of space here. Yes. And when they set up their full display with their full lug and they can go taller, the only reason they can go taller is because they have a six foot six member that stands on the top of an eight foot ladder to be able to put the buildings all together. That's amazing. We, uh, we actually had some interesting things happen this weekend um, that one of the towers started to lean. So that was, uh, that was fun to try and figure out how to, how to fix that. But um, it is... Uh, it's very cool what you can do with Lego. Yes. It's, it's an amazing medium that we can just do anything with. Um, you can go from completely prototypically accurate train models to fantastic skyscrapers, all with the same bits and blocks. That's amazing. Um, as we continue to move through the layout, we have a scene of a rail yard and that is a local rail yard to the member who built it okay so it's accurate to his local rail yard okay um so and he also has a lot of maintenance away vehicles uh, all over his uh layout uh including the uh rail train where they use to lay rail nice um, yeah that's cool and it does actually run okay so um and then we move into kind of more of our fun Lego scene, our, um, our amusement park. Okay. It adds a lot of motion. The roller coasters are amazing. Yes, yes they are. Um, one of them is an actual Lego roller coaster. The other one is made by a company called Coaster Dynamics. Okay. Um, and uh, they're a lot of fun. They're definitely a lot of work to keep maintaining, but um, especially over a show that's three days long, it takes some work, but it's all fun. That's awesome. And then the last module section that we have is a western scene that one of our builders built. And also in the western scene, he also has a ironclad ship, which is actually That's the Cairo. Beautiful. Yes. Um, so it's actually the Cairo, which was actually built here in St. Louis, and it's on display in Vicksburg, uh, Mississippi. Okay. So this is a testament to what you can do. Your passion is obvious all over this work. You guys have done a fantastic job. Thank you so much for sharing this amazing art Abs with the viewers of What's Neat. Absolutely, thank you very much. Good job. Hi, I'm here with Denny Yelzma from Yelzma Graphics. And if you remember in 2018, he was my very first interview on What's Neat. And we're here now 
and 2022 and such amazing array of things you have denny how are you oh i'm great and you know josh to me this is uh this is homecoming because like you say uh, th that was your first interview yeah, you did with me absolutely. and you did such a great job <laughs> Thank you so much. and uh, i'm so proud of you and i see you on the show all the time and I like, I'm proud to say, hey, I know Josh. <laughs> and people ask me all over, you know, because we go to shows all over the United States, and uh, they'll say, hey, what kind of a guy is Josh? And so uh, uh, it's a thrill. And it's a thrill to be back here in St. Louis. Uh, this hobby is such a, a thrill, and everybody is so nice. And down through the years, you know, we've been doing this for 37 years. Wow. And... Uh, People have come by the show here, and it's just so heartwarming. And uh, they'll say, hey, I bought a jacket from you 30 years ago, and I still have it. And I think, wow. And so it, it's uh, it's just great to, to be back here. I see all these hats behind me. You have everything from Alco on this side to the Zephyr way on that side. It's an amazing array of everything. Let's talk about this jacket here. This jacket is absolutely amazing. Well, this is the 25th anniversary of BNSF, and this has been such a great seller. Uh, the guys just love it. It has all the logos, and you know, like I grew up in the cornfields of Iowa, and uh, I watched the Q go by, so uh, naturally I like the Q, but I just, <laughs> and, and you know, watching these trains, uh, and you got to be a rail fan and you got to have a good quality jacket out there and that's a beautiful jacket all this stitching i mean this is thousands of individual stitchings on this jacket and that's not to even mention the stuff down here that's individually um sewn and it's just an amazing product this is a great durable material i have two of these they're uh actually one is my railroad and one is what's neat, and I absolutely love these jackets. I can't wait till fall to break them out. Yeah, they're, they're it's just, uh, it, it's just, it, to me, it's just a work of art making them for guys. And uh, and they, and when they come, uh, come by and show off their jackets, and you know, we do these for clubs also. Mm -hmm. And it's just a, a, a thrill to see 10 guys go by in, in you know, a jacket like this. And so this is definitely art. This is not just some stitches on there. This is time consuming. This is you have to have an artistic eye for this in order to get this. And this is beautiful stuff. And I saw this. This is going to go home with me. I love these beanie caps. You have such a wide array and these are new for you, correct? Well, yes, we have the, you know, the beanie cap, then we have the traditional stocking cap uh -huh. and we have 1360 logos wow. and you have the logo uh, or, or you ask me what the logo is, I, I'll have it. Nice. And if I don't have it, we'll make it for you. We're good. Well, it's very nice seeing you, Denny. I'm glad you're having a good time. And come to your local train show because Denny's probably going to be there. I'll see you later. Hi, I'm Dana with What's Neat, and today we're with George from Soundtracks, and we're here to interview him about a very new product that I think is going to revolutionize the industry on model railroading sound. So George, why don't you tell us about this new product? So Daniel, we're really excited this week. Uh, we've got our brand new Blue Nami product. Now this is a play on the word Tsunami and Bluetooth because it is a Bluetooth controlled direct from our app on our iPad and iPhone direct to the decoder inside your model. So it is a DCC based product so you do still have DCC control but now you also have the added benefit of Bluetooth Direct. So you can buy a decoder, a Blue Nami now, install it in your model and run it with your other trains. But if you wanna have that extra level of control, and I'm gonna show you some of these really cool features here in just a second, you can use the app. Now right now in front of me, let's take a look and see what the app can do. All right, so show me all the features here of this new Blue Nami app. Sure. So first off, we have our app. Right now I've got our Union Pacific. I'd dial that up specifically for you. Thank you. So we're gonna do our 2045. This is our G scale uh, GP38-2 right here behind me. Now I have full control through the app, so I can blow the horn. 
and it's very responsive. So take a listen to this. So that's a direct response from the Bluetooth control directly to the decoder inside. So I have full throttle control as well. So I can run the locomotive forward and then I can run it in reverse and all of it's using this app. Now, as you see, this is the very basic screen to start off with operation, but if you want to access the higher functions, there's a little button right here on the side, pulls out a little short menu and there's access to the first 14 functions. And then you can go to the next 14 functions by hitting the second button. There's the rest of it, including your extra lights. So you can turn on things like the class lights and the number boards directly on the locomotive just by using the app. Now, this is how you can control it. And so with the app open, you can still gain access to throttle and direction without closing this window. So you'll always have immediate contact control. Now where this is really going to shine, there's two aspects that I want to show you. Is one, down here we have a gear. We have a settings. This is basically a full decoder setup menu. No longer have to deal with CVs directly. So if I want to go through and change the air horn, for example, I just click this here where it says sound settings. Now I go to main sounds and I'll scroll down here where it says horn and I can click that, pulls up the full menu and let's pick a different one. We're going to pick that right there if I want to hear it. I can get the sample and you can hear that instantly change. If I want to adjust the volume, I simply move this and I can change the volume and sample it so that that way before I leave the settings menu, I can actually hear the sound and make sure I'm happy with the settings. So all of this is completely set upable through the app. Wow. I think I just made up a word there, set upable. <laughs> set upable, that's great. So. Anyway, we're really excited about this because if you do still want to set CVs, so let's say you know what CVs you want to do and you don't want to find them in the app, great. You hit the CV settings, you can go through and actually program the CVs directly. Now all of this is stored in the decoder itself. So if you were to set it up using the app, pick it up and put it on your DCC layout, all the settings are still there. So you're not setting it here, you're setting it there, you're just using the app to do that. Now here's one of the added benefits I want to show you. Usually when you get a new decoder, let's say you were setting it up on your DCC system, you want to read all CVs. That takes several minutes. Watch this. We're going to hit the button, read all CVs. Wow, that is like lightning fast speed there. And we're done. That's it. That's it. I've just read all my CVs. So if I was to program a CV directly using the DCC system and I want to see where that is, I just read all my CVs, so now I can get that in there. So I'm going to show you the last really, really cool thing. So you have all these settings. Actually, there's a lot of cool things. So I'm going to show you the last one in order to keep this short, because we could talk for an hour. Right. So dynamic digital exhaust, you can auto calibrate using the app. But this is where I really want to talk about is Consist. So we've, you and I have done a video on Consisting before. So we've talked about lead locomotive and their settings, middle locomotives and the settings and the rear locomotive. Well, here's how you can do this now. You tell the app which one's the lead unit and you determine which functions turn on and off using the app. And this will set it up. So like say for example, if your rear, if your lead locomotive, you don't want to turn on something, a light for example, you can just turn it off. We want to change this with our middle locomotives and our rear locos. Because you'll notice here when I open up the mid loco, there's no bell, there's no air horn, there's no short horn. It's all turned off. If I want to enable it, I can simply just click it. So this allows you to build your consist. Now when, let's build a consist really quickly with these locomotives behind me. I have my Union Pacific and I have a small little HO scale Mopac SD40. So of course between you and I, we're going to make that Mopac the lead unit. Alright, <laughs> let's do it. So we're going to use this. We're going to use this arrow right here. We're going to go to the control for the Mopac SD40. This chain down here on the bottom, we're going to hit this chain link and you're going to see consist A, B, C, and D. So you have up to four consists that this unit will be able to talk to. Unlimited number of locomotives other than your track power. So I can have 30 locomotives in a consist if I want. I'm just going to collect this. We're going to select consist B. So now we're set up to consist B. So now I have control of this SD40.
So now we're going to go back to the Union Pacific 2045. We're going to make that its trailing unit. So we're simply going to click the chain. We're going to do consist number B. And look, my throttle went away because it's consisted now. So I have two settings. This is my rear locomotive and we're going to make it facing backwards. So we're going to make sure that it knows it's facing backwards. So now I'm going to go back to my Mopac SD40. I'm going to start moving him forward and you're going to notice that they're running in opposite directions because the way I built the consist, they're back to back. Okay, so I have full control. When I blow my horn, it's coming out of the SD40. But now when I get to the end of my run, let's say I'm doing a turn and I want to go back to the depot, okay? I come over here to my Union Pacific 2045. We'll go ahead and make that the lead. Thank you. So we push the lead button, make lead. Now this locomotive is the lead. We have our sounds. Wait. There it goes. We have our throttle. We're going to go in forward here. We're going to start moving. And you're going to notice that the locomotives are now moving as they would if they were reverse direction. But all my horn and bell now have moved to what is now the lead unit. Consisting is a breeze with Blue Nami. So, we, you know, when you and I did a conversation before, we set CV19, uh, 21, 22, 245, and 246. And just to think, a jam drive, what I use, it also takes, what, 30 minutes, give yeah. or take, to maybe set up all individual, like, functions and stuff like that. Absolutely. So now you can have a fleet of Blue Nami. We can run them using the app. We only are using the track for track power. So think about this. DC or DCC track power will work these Blue Namis fantastic. But think of that a little one step further. Battery power, onboard battery power. So Sounds those great. Garden, those garden railways, Ken, I know you have a garden railway. We're gonna have to get some in your hand once they're available. But this is an unofficial official announcement of the large scale version coming next. So we will have a Blue 4408 coming next. So if you're not already subscribed to our, U our uh, newsletters or our YouTube channel, make sure you do so that you'll be apprised of when those come out. But this weekend, we're selling our Blue Nami Blue 2200, which is the HO scale universal decoder. Retail price is $169.95. And so this makes it so much easier. So if you're doing Garden Railway with battery, you're doing DCC with track power, for you analog guys out there that are still using track power, guess what? Your holdout is paid off. Now you have access to be able to run this. And so maybe we'll try to see if we can get Mike Buddy to actually get some sound decoders in his locomotives because he no longer has to have DCC. No, he doesn't. No, George, I think it's phenomenal. When I saw the first announcement, I'm like, okay, they got something cooking, but I look at it, Bluetooth, it makes sense, mm -hmm. you know? Because like you said, you link it up to your phone and then a guy doesn't have to spend maybe $500 to start out with on his command system, Correct. you know, which they're normally $500 for a radio system like that. But I think this is definitely going to revolutionize the sound industry as a whole. Yeah, it's definitely a big change. And we're really excited about it. We've got a lot of buzz. It's been busy. I mean, it's taken you guys almost two days to get over here. It's been uh, so crazy over here. But what's really been fun, I'll share this little story with you. So when we had some of our first customers after the ad went out, we started getting asked, asked about this from some of the Lego guys, the guys that are modeling in Lego. Right. And they do some amazing work out there, but they're all onboard battery control. They said, oh my God, this is fantastic. So this morning, this is Saturday, we came in and I was greeted at the booth with a handful of Lego guys right here at the booth waiting for us. They had built a model last night to put in their train. So they had it running, they came over, we played with some settings, we got it going, and they're in a separate room here at the show as I'm sure you'll see in the video. But Sean, our marketing manager, went over to go take some pictures and they applauded as he walked in the room. You wanna talk about that and the families are pointing, oh my God, that one has sound. So this is really exciting, we're really happy about this and we hope we're excited that we'll be having more formats coming out soon down the line. So this is really a game changer. But like I said, if you're still using DCC, you can still use it, so we're good to go. That's great, I'll definitely be getting my orders in very, very soon. So. Do so, because they're selling fast. All right. All right, George, well, I thank you very much for your time. You're getting a great product, and that's the segment for What's Neat.
I'm standing here with Ken Silvestri from Broadway Limited Models, that amazing company that makes such beautiful steam power and Thank diesel you. locomotives, both Thank in you. HO and N scale, right? Correct. And Ken, you've been working for this company for many years, we've known each other. Yeah. Tell me how much fun it is to be in the hobby you love. We love what we do. You know, you always hear that, well, you don't work if you do. Well, we still do work. You know, it's not a vacation at all. It's hard work, but we love it. At the end of the day, I always feel like we're in the entertainment business. We, we make things that, that bring people joy. Yes. And the, the, the biggest thing, that, the best thing that's ever happened to me is people come in and they say, you know, for Christmas morning, I got up and there was one of your locomotives there. So, we touch these people on Christmas morning. Yeah, how good is that? That's that's awesome. It is the best hobby in the world. It is. Now you've got some amazing new products that a you're announcing here at the yeah. NMRE show. Tell us. And these will be available between now and December. Okay. And we'll start off with the, um, my favorite steam locomotive is the Lindbergh Special, the Pennsylvania E6. Nice. Uh, the, the 442, die cast, smoke, sound, all of the, the Broadway. The, the, the quality, um, and it, it's a, I think what's special about that locomotive is that it's small enough that it looks at home on every layout. Right. Whether it's a huge layout or a small layout, it, it's a nice size and tons of pulling power. All our stuff has tons of pulling power. That's amazing. Right behind it is the, um, the Commodore Vanderbilt. Again, a, another um, uh, die cast, smoke, sound, uh, all the bells and whistles. Right? right, the streamline is beautiful. <laughs> oh, and um, yeah, or it's been called the inverted bathtub, which doesn't sound so nice, but it's, it's still a good, a nice thing. Uh, next we have in the back there is the, um, the Blue Goose. Yes. Which is a locomotive that's, if it's on any layout, draws immediate attention. It's like, it, it just, pulls your eye to it. And again, it's, it's that, and that's a hybrid locomotive. Okay. And it's, um, again, our smoke, our sound, um, all the, again, all the bells and whistles, because all of our electronics are, are essentially the same that go from locomotive to locomotive. Right, that's amazing, it's all good. And then scale, we have the um, Alco RSD-15. And one of the most surprising things that, that occurred with that when we went to make it is we looked at our, our, our sales history in, in HO, and that has been our biggest selling locomotive. The RSD-15, who thought? You know, we never, it was one, we all sat there and went, wow, I, that, yeah, okay. <laughs> but, and the response has been, it, it kind of shows that, that people have how much they want it and how much they're looking for it and how much they're ready to, to order it. Very nice. Um, and then we have a in, in new, it's the um, Norfolk and Western Y6B, articulated yes. end scale, full sound. Uh, it has all the same features as the HO locomotives do. Okay. Which, to me, it's remarkable to get that much, that many, I had an engineer hat, we would always call it happenings. Yes. What's going on in that locomotive, there's all these happenings. So we get all the happenings from the, that we have in the HO into the end scale, uh, except puffing smoke. Okay. And we just don't have the room to make the, the, the smoke, and the, the puffing smoke. That's amazing. And, uh, but what's not on the table is the big boy in end scale, which is doing in December, and that's going to have a smoke unit in it, not a puffing smoke unit, okay. but a, like a sooth style smoke unit. Nice. And that all is scheduled to be here between now and Christmas. I don't know how you do it. You guys have got so many different product entries that you've had through the years, and I've got so many of your Pensy steam locomotives that you made, the M1s. Um, it's just it's wonderful, and I thank you for what you guys do for the oh. hobby. And, and well, thank you very much, and I, I appreciate the, your audience and getting to talk to them. And uh, again, we love what we do. So again, it, it, <laughs> it, it is. It, it's still work. Don't don't ever get that wrong. But uh, of all the jobs you have, how, what a nice what a nice thing. That's you know? awesome. All right, guys, Ken Silvestri from Broadway Limited Models. Hi, I'm Dino with What's Neat, and today we're here at the NMRA 2022 train show, 
and I got Ricky Kyle here with the HO Scale Fremo. And Ricky, it looks like we got a fantastic layout. Tell me a little bit about this. Absolutely. We have modules from 10 states in one Canadian province. Toronto is the city, actually. We have 15 modelers here, uh, about 160 feet of mainline, and 26 modules all together. And uh, so we started planning this several months ago when we found out about NTS. And so the guys put a lot of work into getting this stuff really good looking, and uh, we've got it all together. And uh, the space is 50 by 25. Normally, for those people who know Fremo, we go a lot bigger than this. But I think uh, in this space, we've done a great job. Yeah, it looks like you guys got a lot of miscellaneous different modules here. I guess uh, every club member here has their own module? That's correct. So uh, most of these people are part of groups, you know, regional groups. We got Capital Fremo out of the D.C. area. We got Minnesota Fremo. Fremo. We got Southern Kansas Fremo, Nebraska Fremo. And so they kind of concentrate on those regions where they um, are, are from. And for example, behind us we have the uh, Bessemer and Lake Erie Kimball Viaduct. And this is from Mark Galatowicz, who's hiding down here behind us. Just a fantastic module. And even though these are all representing different areas, they all tie in together really nice. So. I see the flow, the dynamics of all the scenery, like you just said, they flow evenly. Now tell me, what's your favorite scene on this railroad? Well, I think we're standing in front of my favorite scene, to be honest gotcha. with you. Uh, nothing beats a bridge. Uh, this has attracted a, a lot of crowds throughout the entire weekend. People are just uh, all inspired by seeing su uh, such a faithfully reproduced prototype scene and watching that bridge or the traffic move over that bridge. So if you want, we can walk around. I can show you some of the other ones. This is called T&E. Uh, this is Donnie Berg out of Nebraska. Okay. Just, a, just a little industrial spur, and that allows us to actually go into uh, another area. So we have a Kansas module, and then my module back here, which is called Transload N. So it's for uh, a little bit of switching with uh, Transload sand and boxcars. Uh, this scene is out of Nebraska. Uh, this is Bruce Hochberger. And so this is DPC Industries and U.S. Cold Storage. So we have gas transfer here and cold storage uh, uh, freezer and refrigerator right. stuff over here. And what we have rolling through right now is the Pioneer Zephyr. And uh, as you can see, looks right at home going through Nebraska, which is where this scene right. is actually filmed. Uh, as we go on, we actually, a lot of modules get um, moved. And this one actually started out in California. Uh, it's called Old River. It's uh, David Grounds. He now lives in Pennsylvania. And so uh, <laughs> it still has the desert scenery, but he's done a great job uh, uh, putting it all together. He's still working on it. And uh, it makes a great big sweeping curve for us here. So. Looks like guys got a lot of run a lot of big equipment. Now I gotta ask, what kind of operation system do you use? We use Digitrax. Uh, the Fremo standard is Loconet, and Digitrax is the biggest user of the Loconet protocol. So we use Digitrax pretty much exclusively uh, for the control systems on Fremo. Gotcha. Uh, and that makes it uh, interoperable with everybody else, so. Right. And then uh, we go into a couple of what we call the Kansas beer curves. Uh, they are actually curves we, we messed up not from drinking beer, so I don't want anybody to think that. But uh, we actually got the measurements wrong on them. But we decided we could still use them as Fremo modules. Gotcha. And then going in, we have a couple of modules out of uh, Capital Fremo, Clarence Gunther. Uh, he's here from uh, Virginia. And it's called Mathis Creek and Larry's Farm. And you can see how much corn he has put on this thing. Got uh, a lot of cornfields yeah. over here. Uh, I don't want to... I never wanted to ask him how many kits he used to make this because it would probably be mind-boggling. And then you can see his, uh, see his little creek. And just to throw in, uh, we entered the module contest, the, uh, the overall layout, modular layout contest, and we won second place, so I'm pretty happy with that. Well, congratulations on that. Uh, this next one's out of Oklahoma. This modeler did not come with the module, but he lent it to another modeler here that allowed us to uh, put it in our layout. Uh, over here we have La Whaley Switch. This was built by somebody several years ago. Unfortunately, he's no longer with us. He passed away. But it's a car repair facility and we're using it as, a, as a, a yard to run around and stuff. Now, do you guys technically do like project couple operations or you just have guys run around with trains and have one guy dispatching? It's, it's kind of a combination of both. We have had formal operating sessions, 
But for setups like this, we usually have ask for like four to five people to come on at any given time. And so they'll kind of deconflict. But because it's single track with passing sightings, they have to they have to do operations. They can't just take off and not pay attention what's out ahead of them. So uh, even if we don't do formal operations, we're still doing operations. Uh, let's see here. We can point out a couple other scenes. Uh, sure. Back over here, we have uh, one of the Kansas scenes. Uh, it's called uh, Bonanza. It's actually based off of a um, uh, an aircraft sighting. Uh, Wichita, Kansas, is the air capital of the, of the world, and so uh, they used to ship airplanes out of that on rail. So he modeled that, and he's put a couple of the operational oil wells on there lately. Um, I'd say one of my favorite scenes, I know I said the bridge was my favorite scene, but either tied or a close second is this one. It's called Hillside Northern. And this is by Bill Persall out of uh, Illinois. And it's just a gorgeous, has a little station on here. He's added on a little trestle bridge. And if you look at the trestle bridge uh, around it, there's a lot of critters, let's just put it that way. So he has done a lot of uh, mini prints type things and uh, he'd make a good advertiser for mini prints, I would say that. So back behind me, uh, the big grain elevator is my module. It's called Farmer's Co-op. It's kind of a conglomeration of um, uh, different Midwest scenes out of Kansas and Nebraska. And then going on around, we have a module out of Arkansas that has all the uh, pine trees on it and the covered bridge. And then we go into another couple Kansas modules and uh, just to, you know, again, to tie it all together with the Midwest theme. Gotcha, gotcha. Looks like you got a lot of amazing modules here. Now tell me, uh, how long did it take you guys to get down here to St. Louis? And are you guys willing to come back here for another show? <laughs> well, it didn't take me long at all. I live about 30 minutes away. But uh, we have guys that traveled. Uh, uh, our, our friend from Pennsylvania has got a nine-hour drive tonight to get home. So we're going to try to get him out here the fastest. But so you can see, we got the folks from uh, uh, Toronto, uh, the folks from Nebraska, they all have a significant drive ahead of us, ahead of them. And it's just something that they, they're willing to do because uh, getting together with their old friends and, and showing off their modules is just something that they've always loved to do. And uh, last night we had a big dinner together and we had a good time and it, it's sharing stories and, and talking about model trains. Looks like you guys had a lot of public draw here over the past three days here at the NMRA. We want to thank you very much for coming to the 2022's convention. Well, I appreciate it. And uh, thanks for stopping by and let me talk about Fremo. <laughs> oh, thank you, Ricky. Thank you. And that's a segment for What's Neat. All of the products seen on this episode of What's Neat are available from Lombard Hobbies in Lombard, Illinois, or order online at LombardHobby.com. Bachman Trains. Now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at BachmanTrains.com. <laughs>